Do you wanna impress your friends with a fancy French dessert that looks complicated but is actually super easy? Say hello to Cream Puffs. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. These cream puffs will be ready before you know it. So let's get started. First off, let's make that amazing pastry cream. It's one of my favorite things to eat. I'm gonna be splurging and using my special occasion vanilla beans that have been in the pantry for a while. Split it open with a sharp knife. So just lay it down flat and gently and respectfully slice. Open it up like this. You'll see a lot of seeds on the inside. You can use a knife or a spoon and just scrape them out. That is black gold. Okay, this is gonna get infused into our milk. No, oh, no, 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 no. These precious seeds, which I will not drop, are gonna get infused into our milk, but if you didn't wanna use a vanilla bean, go ahead and use like a tablespoon or so of vanilla extract or vanilla bean paste. It's basically like vanilla extract with vanilla beans and some sugar water and it gives you the exact same look and a delicious taste too. So you could always have some vanilla bean paste on hand, it's really handy. Into a medium pot that has a nice thick wall, it's important to use a nice pot because if you have those ones that are really paper thin on the sides, they scorch everything and they make you feel like you're not a good cook, but you are, it's just the tools. You can also get nice pots secondhand, by the way, you don't have to buy them new. All right, two cups or 480 ml of whole milk, in you go. And now, pop those seeds in, give it a little bit of a whisk, and set it over a medium heat. Bring it to a boil, whisking occasionally, and then take it off heat immediately. So, onto the heat you go. While that milk is heating up, keep an eye on it, don't walk away, because it will boil over. We're gonna mix up the rest of our pastry cream. So, two thirds of a cup, that's 200 times 0.66666, repetend grams and then a quarter cup of cornstarch. This will really thicken things up and I think I will be using some whipped cream in here. So that's gonna soften it up. The cornstarch is gonna help it stay together so that your cream puffs stay nice and high, not oozing out. Give this a quick whisk, 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 whisk. So the cornstarch can totally clump up, which you don't want. I like to have it really well incorporated with my sugar. So mix, 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 whisk, whisk, whisk and then set it aside. For this recipe, we'll be using six egg yolks. That means that you have just enough egg whites to make the most amazing angel food cake. You can click up here for that if you want to, but you could also use it to make meringue cookies, whatever you want, don't throw the egg whites away. So separate those six egg yolks, and you go. I don't know if you can tell based on my hairstyle and beard, or slight tan maybe, but I totally did not transfer the footage correctly for this segment, so I'm refilming it weeks later. <laughs> it was a disaster. Sometimes things just don't go right on the back end, so I'm reshooting this if you want. If you see any continuity errors, let me know. But right now, what's that sizzling sound? It is my milk, it's come to a boil. So we're setting that aside off heat just to infuse for like 10 minutes or so. Here's the fun part, we're gonna add our six partially intact yolks to our bed of sugar and cornstarch. And now, whisk it up. And I'm not, I don't mean whisk, whisk, whisk. It's not that kind of whisk. We're gonna mix it up until it's a beautiful lemony light color and kind of, kind of a thick but flowing paste. Here's where it gets real. You could use an electric mixer, but I enjoy this. Do you see this amazing pastel color? This is the color I wish I could wear, but I do not have the coloring for it. No pastels for me, at least not yellow. All right, perfectly ready. I'm gonna let my milk just cool down for a bit before I temper this mixture. Once your mixture's cooled down a bit so it's warm and not scalding hot anymore, all you need to do is pour about a third of a cup or so into there while you're whisking. This is called tempering the mixture, so whisk, whisk, whisk while you pour. Once that mixture is tempered, we can add the rest of the milk in there while whisking, and then we're going to strain it back into the pot. Straining it will catch any bits of vanilla bean pod and any kind of like skin from the milk or anything else that happens. This is a good practice, and it gives you a really smooth, creamy pastry cream. Strain it back in, and then place it over a medium heat while whisking. Whisk, 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 and it's always better to use a French whisk if you can. 
it'll be narrower and really hit the corners of that pot. Okay, I have my mixture over a medium high heat right now. So we're just gonna whisk this while it's overheat and you will notice a definite change in the consistency. It'll get really thick, bubbly, and um, it'll coat the back of a wooden spoon. While that's heating and you're whisking, make sure you have a pat or one tablespoon of cold butter ready to stir in. Don't forget that, it's happened to me before. And you can see just like that, it thickened up. Okay, this is just off the heat and you're gonna add in one tablespoon of cold butter and just stir, 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 stir. This will help smooth things out. It's also cooling it down just a bit. And as soon as that butter is incorporated, we'll be transferring this to a glass bowl or any bowl really to cool down because we need to chill this. And then it's onto the shoe. Look at that, nice and silky, but very steamy. This custard could cool in the pot, but it would take so long because this pot is very warm. So we're gonna transfer it to a cool bowl and let it hang out in the refrigerator. Get it all out there. Give it a little bit of a smooth after you've transferred it over. This is gonna be covered with plastic now. We don't want a skin to form on this, so just place the plastic directly on the surface. Put this into the fridge and let it chill out until it is cool. It should be like an hour or two. In the meantime, we're gonna start our amazing and super easy shoe pastry. Into the fridge. These cream puffs whip up so quickly and the shoe, which is my favorite pastry to make, is beyond easy. Take one cup or 240 ml of plain old water and put it in a pot. One and a half tablespoons of sugar, there you go. Half a teaspoon of salt and one 113 gram stick of butter. That's half a cup to you and me. So we're gonna put this on medium high heat and just get this to a rolling boil. You wanna have your flour handy as well as a wooden spoon because this step is like time sensitive. Afterwards, we could take a breather, but have the flour ready. And how much flour that is? 120 grams or one cup of plain old flour. Okay, my butter's melting over medium high heat and I also have my mixer ready along with a paddle attachment. This whole operation goes way faster if your butter is room temperature, warm, or you could even melt it in the microwave first if you feel like it. You can give it a little bit of a stir to help things along a bit, but just give it a few moments. You wanna bring it to a rolling boil. That means real frothy, looking crazy, and then take it off heat right away. All right, my mixture might have boiled over. Taking it off heat, adding that flour, and stirring hard. Stir, 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 stir. This is gonna become a nice big ball of delicious flour, but you have to stir hard right now, so. You're looking for it to come together. And once it does, like it is right now, we're gonna put it back over heat for about 30 to 60 seconds. So back on the heat. And so stir over heat. Okay, off heat, oof. Now we're gonna add our very warm, almost shoe to be into the stand mixer. Go ahead. You don't have to use a stand mixer for this. You can use a large bowl, an electric hand mixer. You'll be totally fine. But if you have one, break it out, stand mixer, paddle attachment. And just run the mixer for 30 seconds or so just to help cool things down a bit. You don't need to though, but it's best practice. Nice and steamy. So now this is cooled down just a little bit so it's warm, not hot. We're gonna add our three eggs in one at a time, but have a fourth egg ready, you might need to use it. Kind of depends on your egg size. You can increase speed to like a medium. Okay, two. You take a moment and just scrape the bowl down. It's always nice to scrape the bowl down just so the mixture is homogenous. I say this every time, but it's so important. And by the by, let me show you what's going on right now. So this mixture right now, it's kind of silky, like if you snuck a taste, it tastes silky and has a nice mouthfeel, but don't do that. Just look at it and you can see, mm, it still looks kind of chunky. It's not really clinging to the beater and gracefully falling down, which is what I want to see. So I'm going to add that third egg in and see how it looks. That's almost there. I think I'm going to add in at least part of another egg. So I'm going to mix one egg up 
and see if I can improve the consistency just a little bit. That looks right. So I have a nice oozy, silky mixture falling off in ribbons, but still clinging to the paddle attachments. So you can give this one final mix with your spatula and uh, it's ready to go into a piping bag to pipe out into our delicious cream puffs. This recipe is so quick and easy, but beyond delicious. All right, we're gonna transfer our shoe into a large piping bag fitted with a large round tip. I'm using an 809, but any large round tip will do. Get that in there. Love the consistency of this pastry. And it's so versatile too. You might have seen my Eclair video. Click up here for that. You could all see his shoe for savory cheese puffs, which are delicious. And profiteroles as well. Okay, this is ready. So how big do you want your cream puff to be? I usually go for a smaller one that you can fit into your mouth, but the classic mega cream puff would be piped to like two inches wide. All right, so pipe, 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 done. That tip is a problem, but we're gonna fix it. So don't worry. If we didn't fix it, it would just burn in the oven and be totally singed. So you wanna have a nice like half dome basically. Similar sizes are great. They don't all have to be exactly the same, but you do want to give them room to breathe because they're going to puff up, AKA cream puffs. That's good for the first batch. I'm going to dip my finger in some water just to dampen it, not to make it super wet and just tap these peaks down. I have a little bit of egg left over, so I'm just going to mix it with a dash of cream for a simple egg wash. The egg wash is actually optional, but I love a nice shiny golden color that it'll give us. Just gently brush them with an egg wash. We're gonna pop these into the oven at 425 Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. I need a big flash of heat, but then reduce the temperature to 375 and bake an additional 15 to 20 minutes depending on the size of your puff. You want it to be nice and golden brown and it'll sound hollow as well. Into the oven. I am so excited. My puffs are out of the oven. The filling is chilled and we're gonna make some whipped cream right now. And here's the deal. There are a couple ways that you could fill a cream puff. You could just fill it with whipped cream. That's totally fine. You could just fill it with pastry cream. But let me tell you, uh, you would need a double batch of pastry cream and that would be rich. Yes, it could be rich and that's perfect for you, but today, I'll be making an easy batch of Diplomat cream, which I always call ambassador cream. It's so crazy, it's Diplomat cream. All that is, is the pastry cream folded in and lightened up with some whipped cream or Chantilly cream, if you will. So, into a cold bowl with a cold whisk, I'm adding cold cream, how much? One cup, 240 ml, half a pint. We're gonna sweeten it up just a little bit with like two tablespoons of powdered sugar and then whip it up to maximum stiffness before it curdles. Keep an eye on it because it will happen very quickly. Start on like a medium speed, increase to maximum. Let's take a look. That looks nice, nice and stiff. I might... <laughs> looks good, I have a nice stiff peak. You do not want it to curdle. I can't stress that enough. It turns into butter. Delicious butter. All right, set that aside, set this aside, and I'm gonna get another bowl out. One more bowl, that's all I need. So here's the deal. When you take your pastry cream out of the fridge, you're gonna say, what's going on here? This seems like kind of gelatinous, not like the silky amazing stuff that John described. Well, it's okay, plop it out. Now, you're gonna break it up with your whisk, but then you're gonna whisk it up and it'll come back to life, so. Whisk, whisk, whisk. You could also use an electric mixer, but. Okay, that's good. This is actually perfect for piping. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. All like the thousands of little vanilla seeds in there. So that's all nice and whisked up. What we're gonna do is add in hmm, a couple spoonfuls of whipped cream and just lighten it up, but we're gonna whisk it in. So whisk, whisk, whisk. And for the rest of it, I'm gonna fold the whipped cream in. If you wanna add a stabilizer to whipped cream, go ahead, but I think it's fine with the cornstarch that's in the pastry filling as well as a little bit of cornstarch that's gonna be in your powdered sugar. 
Oh my gosh, this concoction is so amazing. It is, I would just be a monster and eat the whole bowl in one sitting. I would totally feel sick afterwards, but it would be worth it. <laughs> Once you give it a head start with that folding, I'm actually gonna switch it back to the whisk. This is like the business. So we'll be filling our tarts up and we're almost there. We're gonna send this into a piping bag fitted with a large star tip. This is an 846 tip and we're almost there. Do not overfill that piping bag. It's much easier to refill than it is to have a mess coming at the other end. You don't have to cut it in the exact middle. You could be a little bit higher. Fill that tart up. It looks gorgeous. Place the cap on. Then we're gonna finish it off with the lightest dusting of powdered sugar. That's all you need, just two little taps. This is breathtakingly delicious, so amazing, and everyone is going to love it, I guarantee. I'm about to dive into all these cream puffs I'm not sure I'm gonna be sharing, but before I do, if you like this video, check out my French playlist, all my favorite French pastries that you are bound to love too. But now, it's time for a bite. That is just about perfect in every way, shape, or form. I really hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.